Dolly Madison's greatest legacy is the idea that a first lady is the mother of a nation. She was born Dolly Payne on May 20th, 1768 in New Garden, North Carolina. She was one of seven siblings raised in a strict Quaker household. She was really not allowed to mix in the larger society. She is known to have been very beautiful and attention was lavished on her and that butted heads really with the Quaker religion. In January 1790, Dolly married a Quaker lawyer named John Todd. They had two sons, but the marriage ended tragically when a yellow fever epidemic struck Philadelphia just a few years later. She lost in a short period of time her husband, her son, her in-laws. The following year, Dolly Todd met James Madison. They married that same year, but James Madison's status as a non-Quaker led to Dolly's expulsion from the Quaker community. It was difficult for her at first, but she said to be at peace with that. She and James Madison never had any children of their own, but James Madison helped to raise Dolly's surviving son. In 1800, James Madison had been retired from politics when President Jefferson beckoned him to return to serve as Secretary of State. Madison accepted, and a new world opened for Dolly. When Thomas Jefferson became president, both he and his vice president were widowed. And so Dolly Madison oftentimes uh, came to serve as a hostess. And she's credited with bringing a certain charm and etiquette to the White House. When James Madison became president in 1809, Dolly Madison understood the political value of White House social functions in ways that her predecessors did not. She hosted the first inaugural ball for 400 people. She opened up the White House in a very stylish, accessible way. Her physical appearance was regal, but in contrast to that was her spirit, her warmth, her accessibility. During the War of 1812, Dolly Madison risked her safety in order to save vital artifacts from the White House during a British invasion of Washington. She famously protected the portrait of former President George Washington. After eight years in the White House, the Madisons retired to Orange County, Virginia, where they lived until James's death in June of 1836. After his death, she was burdened with the gambling debts of her son, in 1837, Dolly Madison returned to Washington and continued her involvement in politics. She served really as a mentor to her successors and in her own way continued to help through them shape the public role of First Lady. Dolly Madison died in Washington on July 12, 1849 at the age of 81.